Watch this and let's talk about it. She is sitting in, at this dinner table with this guy. He like flew her out to this location because she was in another country. He was going to meet her in this other country. She met him in the summer in Portugal. And so they were here they are. Here they are having this romantic conversation. And of course, naturally, what are you looking for comes up. And he says, I'm looking for a, a woman who wants to get married and who wants to have kids and stay at home and take care of the kids and clean the house and all of the things. And she goes, well, how much am I going to make? Like you, you'd be looking for someone to stay at home, have your children do the domestic labor. And she's like, meanwhile, you're out building your career and earning more money over the next 20 years while my income earning potential is being suppressed. So she's like in 15 years, 18 years, when the kids graduate high school, I have to start over. So like, how much do I make? Now, what I will say is you at least bare minimum need to sit and have a conversation to see what you can afford to do. How much can you afford in the budget to give you some kind of income for what you're doing? If you are in a relationship <clears throat> with a man and he wants you to stay home, cook, clean, take care of the kids, blah, blah, blah. And you say, so how much am I going to make if I do this? And he gets upset with you. Nope, red flag. It's not time to have kids. You shouldn't have kids with him. That relationship is over as far as I'm concerned. I have seen far too many women give up their careers, give up their identity, give up their life, give up their friends for these men <clears throat> so they can start a family. And then one day when he's sick of you, he just gets rid of you like it's nothing, like, you know, you never existed before. And now you're stuck having to get a job somewhere that you don't want to be working, but you got to have some kind of income coming in. And you might say, well, I, I know people, I have a college degree or I'm going to go to school while I'm at home. And I think that's great. But what I want people to wake up to is the job market is highly competitive and if your connections are at a place where they're fully staffed or they really have no control over hiring people and there's somebody that's more qualified than you that's current in the profession, then you're screwed. And a lot of people who say, well, I'm just going to go to school. I have my degree. I have this. I know people are people who have never gone through this situation before and they're just making these assumptions based on I don't know what sounds like makes sense. And the truth of the matter is there are a lot of women working very low paying jobs because they literally had to get what they had to get. I've done it myself. I've worked at plenty uh, fast fashion clothing stores in my lifetime because that's all I could afford. I had to, I had to have some income coming in. I needed a check. So they were hiring and that's what I had to do. I am way overqualified to be working in those places, but at the time that's all I could get. And then of course you eventually work your way up or work your way out until you can get something better. But for most people, especially in this economy, that's a process that's not going to happen overnight. So while I don't think you have to be rich in order to have children, I don't think that at all. I do think that a very smart thing to do would be to sit down and have a conversation about what is this going to look like financially? What are we going to do about health care? What are we going to do about child care? Oh, okay, you want me to give up my job. So what is that going to look like financially for me? And then when we get to this part, this is when women tell me, well, I'm in love. My husband loves me. He would never do anything like that to me. We have a joint account, you know. He's going to let me you have access to the money whenever I need it. We always talk about money. I have nothing to worry about. I once heard a lawyer say that the road to divorce court is paved with the bodies of stay-at-home moms. And that, that, that has burned into my head and has haunted me ever since. A few of you guys may have heard me say this repeatedly, and I'm going to scream it, scream it on top of the tallest mountain. Sure, fall in love, use your heart, be attracted to the person, have chemistry, have, you know, have fun, I love it, beautiful wedding, beautiful gowns, sure. But we as women, we have to start using our heads. We have to start thinking beyond what we're feeling right now and the beauty and the roses and the love and the romance. 
We have to start thinking about what if. I love this person. He loves me. I don't think he would do anything to me, but... If he were to pass away suddenly, if he were to lose his job, if he were to become disabled or ill, um, if he were to leave me, if something happened and I needed to leave him, how would I make sure that myself and my kids, if I have kids, are okay? A lot of us women, we don't think, we don't get to that, that part of the equation. We stop at the love and we take chances on everything else, which is so fucking dangerous so fucking dangerous i want i want some of you all to volunteer at a domestic violence shelter i want some of you all to volunteer at a shelter for people who don't have a place to stay i want you to be an advocate for women who are afraid to go to court by themselves because their partners are, are violent, who at one point were wonderful. I want you to do that, and then I want you to report back to me. Most of those women thought that they had an amazing partner who was loving, who would never do anything like that to them, just like you. And they sat, and they had these amazing conversations, and everything was beautiful, and they decided to take a chance. And now they're in a bad situation. And I want you guys to take it seriously. This is not a joke because the court system doesn't give a shit that you loved him and you gave up your career for him. And, you know, y'all were just young and starting out and you, you wanted to take a chance and move your family across the country for his job. The court doesn't give a fuck about any of that shit. Can, are you able to provide for your kids, ma'am, or not? I have heard tragic stories of women who's who got their kids in a situation to where the kids have to live with the dad because they don't have a way to provide for their children. Situations where women have to work at a job that they never thought they would ever have to work at because they got to, they have to get something. And that degree that they thought that they were going to fall back on so quickly ain't degreeing. It's not because there's a bunch of people who actively kept up their training and their licenses who are literally just ready to roll into that position because they've been doing it consistently who will take those spots content like this triggers a lot of women because if you're honest you can't answer the question of what would you do if your partner wasn't making any money anymore what would you do if you couldn't depend on your partner and it scares so many women to even have to think about it it scares you now there are some women who might have a family member who will allow them to stay with them but then again even with that people's patience gets worn thin really fast people your welcome gets especially if you have kids you know, people want to get on with their lives. It's inconveniencing them no matter how nice they are. Their bills are going to go up while you're there. You might be cramped in a small space. So it's not something that you can rely on forever. But there are a lot of women who would be screwed if anything were to happen to where they could no longer depend on their husband's or their boyfriend's income coming in. They would be fucked. The best thing that you can do for yourself and your children is sit down, pen to paper, type it up, have it legalized, whatever you got to do, get a prenup, and say, answer the tough questions. What would I do if this person left me? How am I going to be compensated for this role that I'm playing of mom and homekeeper? What would happen if something happened to his money? What would I do? Answer the question. Take the chance. And if you're with someone who gets annoyed that if you ask that or they don't have an answer for you, I would reconsider. I, I don't, we, we got to stop. So I get it. So we can get tricked and, and manipulated. And, but sometimes, especially with all the knowledge being given to us now, you can avoid a lot of the bullshit that women like myself and many other women have gone through by asking the questions and making the plans and making sure that if all else fails, you and your children will be okay.